Aha! This is Laborts, and it is so nice to have you here. These are the paints you need. If you want to vote on what mini should Papa Laborts paint next, you can do that on Patreon. Link is in the description. Okay, now to the video. After prepping the miniature, I used Vallejo's black primer. Our first base coat will be Night Lord's blue. This is a very nice dark blue. It will serve as good for the shadows. You see, I use a dry brush to apply this color. If you have an airbrush, please use that because that will be faster. But I like this way of paint application because hobby dry brushes are usually very durable and you can't ruin their tip like you can with regular hobby brushes. It's fast and they can hold a lot of paint and on larger figures this is a very useful feature. To sketch out the highlight, we use the fang. Not a literal fang, but this nice greyish blue. This griffon is more or less symmetrical, so you can mirror the highlights from one side to another. You know the drill. Everything that facing toward the sun will be painted with this color. My general goal was to create a nice space marine blue griffon. I know the box art has a more faint greyish purple look, but if you choose to follow Papa Laborts, you will end up with a beautiful silky dark blue griffon. It will be so nice. Trust me. Now the feathers are a bit tricky. Not gonna lie, Papa Labors has some issues painting these wings, but don't worry, it gets better every time. And this game is full of wings, so by the end of it I will become a wing artist. Use base layer consistency and check every feather. Use some tippling on the body, where the griffon has hair, and paint cone-shaped lines on the feathers. Then glaze over this layer a couple of times. You can go silky smooth on the furry parts, but don't go overboard with the feathers. If you glaze the feathers too much, then you will lose texture, and Papa Laborts heard a terrible tale about people who lost their texture on their minis because of glazing. Their tiny hands became red because someone slept on them. It was me. With Kalgar Blue, we will increase the volume of our highlights. Look carefully at how I apply the paint to the fur and the feathers. For the fur, I use tippling, creating tiny dots and spots. This way I will create the effect of a smooth fur, like you have on short-haired dogs. And the griffons are basically dogs with wings. With a bird head. But basically they are the same. On the feathers, I try to paint lines. Also, your lines should be wider than mine, because uh, later on you will see that I wasn't satisfied 100% with some parts of the feathers, but let's not run ahead of ourselves. Put the highlights on the upper side of its body, on the legs and butt and on the edge of the wings. And on the head, of course. But not under its belly, okay? No Mickey Mouse. Blend in the Calgar Blue with some glazing. Three layers on the body will do nicely and two is enough for the wings. As you can see, the brush that I'm glazing with lost its tip some while ago, but there is no need to throw it out because for glazing on miniatures that are a bit bigger, is perfectly good because you don't need a sharp tip to glaze effectively. And I'm also a bit of a hoarder. We have a nice foundation for our highlights, so let's push it a bit more, volume-wise, with Lotern Blue. Lotern Blue got some yellow in it, so it is a very nice highlight color for blue. Follow the same rules for this part, like when we painted Kagar Blue stippling on the fur and use lines on the feathers. Use this color to edge highlight all the feathers on his body, but only those edges that look upward. Seriously, no Mickey Mouse or otherwise you will get a slap on your tiny hand. And then you will cry and even that will ruin my mood for the day, okay? Not because of uh, any empathy, but uh, crying hurts my ears. So don't do it, please. Glaze over our Lotten Blue with two or three layers and you might start notice something. 
we are at that phase when everything is blue and a bit boring. Of course we didn't paint the head and the armor yet, but this blue is going to look a bit boring if we leave it like this. Now here comes the part where the boys will be separated from men and men will be separated from gladiator and from gladiators they will be separated from papa. If you're a girl it's the same because we are glazing purple over our dark shadowy areas and you may ask but papa laports how many layers do we need? I'm super glad that you asked that question. All of them. This will increase the depth of our shadows and make our blue a 100% more interesting and you will be titled as Papa for the rest of your life. Then I went back and increased the size of the highlight areas on the feathers with Lotten blue. The main discovery about that was that the feathers give a more realistic look if there are less separation clues to the feather shafts and more separation to the edge of the feathers. Those feather hairs tend to split here and there throughout their life cycle, so it makes sense to paint them this way. I increased the definition of the feather shafts with some recess shading using Night Lord's Blue. This was pretty easy because the crevices are sculpted nicely throughout the feathers. You can use a bit more diluted paint as well, it will work fine. But do not stain the highlighted parts, because your tiny hands will pay a huge price for it. We increase the depth of our shadows a bit more using Nagarot Night. This is a bit darker purple than what we used before. As for the feathers, I only paint the bottom half. This way it reinforces the effect that the light is coming from above. Try to paint cone-like lines on the feather, so it will create some separation between the feather hair. You can also glaze some of this in the recesses. Now we push the highlights even further with the mix of ice yellow and lotern blue. Try to focus on areas around the head and the head itself of course. We increase the contrast of these parts so that our focus will be on the head of the griffon. I only go as far to the sides with this highlight, but not further. Especially putting some emphasis on the shoulders. Our eye will catch the enemy part if we do our job right. And of course we are doing it right. It's harder to see without the enemy, but it will be nice in the end. Then we glaze over our latest layer. You can go silky smooth, but don't lose our blue mid-tones, because then I will take you to your museum of fine arts, where I show you the importance of mid-tones on classical paintings. And then I slap on your hand. Now it's time for the copper enamel. We use Rhinox Hide for the base color. We cover 80% of the armor with this paint. It is very important to place your highlight areas at the parts where you can reach them easily. If a light scientist tells you that the light wouldn't come for a certain angle and blah blah blah, send those guys to Papa Laborts and uh, I will have a nice conversation with them about light. Not because I will just slap on their tiny hands. Then blend in the Rhinox hide with two or three layers. After that we use Dumbo Brown. Try to be very careful not to hit the crevices with the paint. We need those black parts to give us some nice definition between the armor panels. If you did screw up a bit, then black line them now, because later on it will be harder. But that's okay, this is a hard part, you can relax your tiny hands, they'll be safe. Just joking, I will slap on your tiny hand if you have some brown paint on the nice black recesses. But Papa Laborts only do this because he loves you and cares about you. Then glaze in the Dumbul Brown with one or two layers. It's an easy plan. Now for our mid-tone, we are going to use Tau Light Ochre. It's a bit orange yellow and perfect for copper. Try to be very careful not to stain the black parts again. Use base layer consistency and check your paint if it's too runny. 
If it is, then wipe it off on a paper towel because if you do a mistake here, you have to restart the whole process. Try to be clean as you can, so Papa Labords will be proud of you. Then blend in the tau light ochre. <laughs> okay. Pronunciation check again. Ochar. 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 Then blend in the tau light ochre, but try to be precise as well. Of course, it's glazing, so it needs to be runny. But if you do not trust yourself, then try to dilute your glaze more. This way it will take a lot more layers, but if you make a mistake, it will be harder to notice. Then we use Morgas bone to desaturate our metal a tiny bit. This is more of a heavy glaze than a base layer consistency. Try to paint all of your highlight sections parallel to the previous ones. This plate would catch the light the same way if it would be a curved metal plate. So think about it like this, that is just a curved plate, but it's separated into sections. No matter how many pieces you cut it, the light would catch it the same way. Our final highlight for the copper NMM is ice yellow. This will add that shiny glint to our metal. Use it in base layer consistency and again, try to be careful not to stain the mid-tones or basically any part which is not your brightest highlight. If you finish this painting without your head becoming red, then you'll be very lucky. I would say that try to etch highlight with this color, but I would rather not, because these edges are not that smooth, so it would be really hard to get a crispy etch highlight on them, and more likely you will just ruin your work. Not that Papa Labor's not trusting your skills, but uh, yeah, those edges are not, not really nice. After that, carefully blend in the ice yellow. For our final touch for the NMM, we glaze in a nice orange hue to sell the copper effect even more. Try to aim between the mid-tones and the brightest highlights. Not on the brightest highlights, but next to it, because it will mute our highlights and we don't want that. Unless you want a slap on your tiny hand, of course. Now it's time for the beak and the rest of the Griffon's head. For the base coat, we use Scrag Brown. Cover the whole beak with it. Now we are back on the beak. Mix some Iria yellow to the scrag brown and with a heavy glaze consistency cover 70% of the beak. Leave some of the side parts brown and apply a couple layers to get a smooth finish. With pure Iria yellow, increase the highlights close to the mouth and the top of the beak. This is also a heavy glaze consistency. Same procedure with some heavy glaze of ice yellow. Reduce the highlight areas a tiny bit and you should end up with a nice yellow beak. With white, we create an undercoat for the eyes. Base layer consistency and zero Mickey Mouse. Then go over it with some phalanx yellow and create a tiny dot with black. And if you want to keep the Papa title, then you go in with a dot of white between the iris and the yellow part of the eye. With Dumbul Brown, cover the horns and the leather straps. Angle your brush in a way that you won't paint over the face. Add some Morgast bone to the Dumbul Brown and cover 50% of the top part of the horn 
but try not to paint over the leather straps. I did the leather straps black off camera to separate them from the horns. That cover 90% of that layer with pure morgast bone. After that I went back to the straps with Dumbo brown. Also don't forget to paint his other leather straps with Dumbo brown. Cover his scorpion sting with the fang. Then highlight it with a 50-50 mix of white and the fang. And for the last highlight add some more white to the mix. We do the same procedure for the claws. These details are extremely crucial to have a finished miniature. We are using white because we just want to create some muted interest on the griffon. These are the parts that should not stand out, but when someone looks at the mini and their eyes wander over the claws, they could appreciate the effort we put into it. Just joking, obviously when you play with these minis with your friends, the light conditions are usually pretty terrible, so they won't gonna see these details. But we know that they are there, and that's what matters. At least for me. I'm so glad that you joined me on this little painting adventure. If you want to vote on the next mini that uh, Papa Labor should paint for the next video, you can do that on Patreon. Also, a super big thank you for my lovely, lovely Patreons with the most beautiful hands. And especially for Jonathan Rhodes! Thank you so much. I hope the rest of your day will be as smooth as a granny's butt cheek. The child started to make noises. I don't like it.